Dave, hello again. Ian, how you doing? I am well, and we have a guest this week, uh, Alejandro Brown, uh, founder of I-70 Things. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you guys so much for having me tonight. Yes, I am very excited. So we are in Colorado, as we've discussed many times. Um, and Alejandro, you run sort of like a, uh, it started out as, a, as an Instagram account, right? Um, a, a pretty I-70 through Colorado specific account. But before everyone who's not from Colorado tunes out, it's pretty, uh, I think it's a, a pretty universal, <laughs> it has a universal appeal because it's uh, a lot of stuff that we all see and deal with on our, on our daily basis uh, in traffic and all that. So just real quick, just tell the people what I-70 Things is and kind of like how it started. Of course. I mean, I think how it started is the most important part just because everyone thinks it was, you know, planned from the get go and it was going to be this big thing. And that's absolutely not how it started. Right. For me, I was stuck on I-70 like most people have experienced or unfortunately will experience. And I was stuck on a long drive from Denver to Aspen and we were going for an event. I was with a buddy actually, and I was riding shotgun. So what do you usually do? You take pictures, videos of the things you see. So the I-70 things, Mm -hmm. the things in this sense, right? And it was just ridiculous this day. I mean, it was nuking out, you know, cars were off the side of the road. Of course there were fender benders and what really solidified it for me that day is we were probably a hundred yards from the semi that just totally jackknifed and blocked Uh, both lanes. Holy cow. And it was one of those things where we looked at each other. I was with my buddy Hunter at the time and we looked at each other and said, this is, you know, going to be a couple hours, if not more. And we had a state trooper come up to our window and said, Hey, what we're going to do is we're going to evacuate you guys off the side, off the road, because, you know, we need emergency crews to be able to get to the accident. And so we went, we were going westbound. We ended up doing a U-turn in the westbound lanes and we started driving eastbound. So the closest exit and then got off there. Wow. And while we were doing that, I was like, Oh, I have a great idea. (laughs) (laughs) Inspiration (laughs) struck. (laughs) Yeah. Unfortunately so. So uh, that's when I posted, made the account, posted the first photo. It's still the same one today. And that was from my day that day. That's great. And, and what's funny too about that is that, you know, for anyone who's not in Colorado, like that's not an uncommon story really like that. I mean, usually not to that degree of having to drive the wrong way and, on the highway or whatever, but you know, uh, I seventy is the is the main highway, the main interstate that runs east west through through Colorado and goes up into the mountains, and it it gets crazy weather, and but you have people who are just like driving through and don't know about snow tires or whatever, um, and it causes havoc all the time. So it's like the traffic that everyone in the U.S. deals with, but like on steroids, essentially, right? It, it that's well said i mean how i put it to most people is you know when you picture a highway what do you picture right it's usually you're driving pretty fast mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what lane you're in you're driving fast mm-hmm. and mostly it's flat on both sides yeah luckily for us and i say luckily because we're very fortunate to have the mountain so close by and you know we get to take advantage of that but with that comes the I-70 things as we, you know, <laughs> yeah. as, as what it's coined as. And yeah. I mean, that just says we have elevation, we have ups and downs, and we're not going up hills. We're going up mountains. We're going through the continental divide. Yeah. And it's a lot of factors that, you know, most people who drive, say, on a highway aren't usually used to. And that's where the unfortunate things happen just because of 
the elements that we have to abide to uh, abide by as you know drivers and that's kind of what i-70 things caters to and i consider it you know i-70 is the gateway to your next adventure right so you're usually driving on i-70 if you're from colorado you're driving to your next adventure you want to go to the mountains you want to go skiing snowboarding camping hiking whatever it may be but it's in the mountains and that's because that's our backyard. That's our playing field. That's where we get to enjoy, you know, why we live here for and the activities the state provides. But, you know, there is this barrier and that's I-70 itself. And that's the gateway to our next adventure. Right. Yeah. I always think about this too, of like how, you know, it always seems so easy, right? You just, you hop in the car and you don't think about it. Like, I'm just going to go do this thing. But you know, I think we get really complacent with that of, you know, oh, we're humans. We can just do what we want. But, you know, the world has other plans sometimes. And uh, we run into that like a lot more than I think you do in, in other parts of the country where you'll get, you'll be driving along in a t-shirt in Denver and it's 70 degrees out. And then you drive an hour and it's, you know, 20 below and a foot of snow on the ground, you know, it's, it's crazy. Right. I mean, just to riff off that, I mean, one of the coolest notions is, you know, if you're driving, let's call it east to west and you're in the eyes and hour tunnel on the east mm-hmm. side, it can be yeah. sunny. Once you get out on the west side, I mean, it can be, you know, snowing in 30 degrees, you know, yeah, obviously. And it's one of those things where you're just like, okay I, you know it's, it is what it is there's nothing you can do about it and the big thing like i kind of push for is preparedness because all i can do is try to tell people hey this is what it might be like be yeah. prepared because not only are you helping yourself but you're helping every single other person on the road by being prepared i think that's one thing that really sets your account apart from a lot of other kind of like uh things where people send submissions and stuff like that, like that, like awareness factor of what you're providing, like it has a different ring than just like kind of aggregate accounts or anything like that. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate that. I mean, you know, it's one of those things where I can do so much. I can remind you about the traction law. I can remind you about, Hey, you know, it might snow today the weather, there might be inclement weather, you know, so-and-so. And the biggest thing is you decide what you do. But my goal is, let's say the traction lot, if we can get a couple people off the road every day that shouldn't be there, who knows what it could have been. Right. Mm-hmm. And that makes it safer for everyone and usually quicker, right? Because traffic, unfortunately, in the winter is usually due to, you know, vehicles that are not abiding by the traction law. Right. So that's a great point that you brought up. No, oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's on your blog. You have links to uh, Colorado Department of Transportation Resources. You have the traction law um, flow sheet. Like, do you have all-wheel drive? Like, I, I love you just have that right on your site, right? And then, you know, you have like the... Like, you know, you, you go to your Instagram account and you have like the barrel of a cement mixer sitting on the side of the road, you know, like, it's, it's so good. Like the variety, you know, like, yeah. So it's, it's very much appreciated and, and we enjoy seeing stuff like that. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Can you tell us about like the first time that somebody submitted something to you or like, how did, how did that start? Oh, uh, that's. That's a great question because at first, you know, how most Instagram accounts start, I'd assume at least is I had my, let's call it album of content, right? And it was from the years that I was at Boulder and, you know, I had all these images and videos of things that were going awry on I-70. And I was like, oh my God, like, this is crazy. Let me send it to my friends. Da, da, da. And I forget who the individual was who actually sent me their first, like, you know, piece of content. They're like, hey, I have this. It's kind of crazy. I saw it on I-70. 
would you like to post it? And I was like, mm, yeah, okay, for sure. And I was like, I'll give you credit. Like, let's see. And I mean, this was at what, a hundred followers, some, you know, something like very small and posted that it did like fairly well, nothing special, but I was thinking about it for a few days later and I was like, oh, light bulb. I think I understand how to make this thing grow. And it's nothing, it's not for me. It's for everyone, right? right. How can I help everybody? And this was the, okay, I, I know how to grow this account and how to make it for the people, by the people. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you're... <laughs> your followers don't disappoint there are some crazy things in here like the cement mi mixer on the side of the road for sure um i mean there's all sorts of crazy stuff yeah um but the one thing uh, i was wondering about too is you know how you know we talked about the traction laws and kind of like trying to steer it in a in a way that's um actually helpful and stuff like just in general how is your has it changed your kind of relationship with, with cars or with the idea of traffic of, um, you know, complaining about traffic instead of being like, Oh, you're the traffic. Um, you know, how, how is seeing all of this and kind of getting a glimpse into the public's the way the public uses the road, uh, kind of changed your ideas about that. I love that just because, um, I mean, I've always been a car guy. I love cars um big stick guy you know mm -hmm. and there's there's two pieces to this i think there's the internal and the external right so the internal for me is understanding how like the colorado department of transportation works i hadn't worked with the government before mm -hmm. but understanding their campaigns why they're running them when they're running them that's really interesting just because it helps all of us mm -hmm. And we only see the final product and that's what you're stuck with. But the mission, why they're doing it, when they're doing it. I mean, we, we don't really know unless you're in the inside. Right. And right. then the second part of that is like you mentioned, like the traction piece. I mean, that is so important just because you can either make it up the hill or you can't. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and I could leave it at that if I wanted to, but I mean, it affects all of us. And that's what everybody sees, right? When you can't make it up the hill, but when you can, what is it? Is it two wheel drive, four wheel drive? Is it your tires? Yeah. You know, weight distribution. I mean, there, you know, what, uh, what's on the ground that day? Is it snow? Is it rain? Is it sleet? Is it hail? I mean, there's so many factors that go into this. And especially when you're climbing, you know, say, or going down six miles from the tunnel to Silverthorne, right? Can you stop? Can you not stop? How much does your vehicle weigh? Right. And, you know, there's so many factors that are important to understanding this kind of external piece of what ends up on I-70 things and why is that the case? And if we can learn why that's the case, maybe, you know, you'll be, hopefully you'll be better off next time <laughs> you hit the road. Right. And that's the goal here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I feel like driving I-70 into the mountains is like a little bit like a boss battle in a video game. Right. Like, let, like there's some people that see like all the extra ammo and all the health stuff and like all the like power ups and they're just like, whatever, don't need it. And they go through that <laughs> door. Right. And they get waxed by the boss. Right. And then there's yeah. folks that are like very prepared. They're picking up their load out. They've got everything. Right. And guess what? You make it. You make it that day. Right. You know, I don't know. I 70, I 70 is a beast. Right. Yeah, it's yeah, a harsh it, mistress. It, it yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. You're, you're so right. I mean, it's one of those things. And I mean, the best way to put it is every day is different. So what does that mean? You know, what you faced yesterday doesn't necessarily mean you'll face today, face tomorrow, and so on. So how can you best prepare yourself 
and your vehicle so that you can conquer whatever mission you know you're trying to go on right and that's what we try to support yeah absolutely yeah absolutely um have have you ever what's like a, a thing that you've done where if this account has had existed before you created it and and someone else was running it you would have ended up on i70 things have you ever done something that you you would have featured on on here as like being a being an idiot that's a very fair question and i'll be completely <laughs> honest with this one um i've never been asked this so um you guys get the tea and <laughs> so um i mean I, I think about this all the time actually it's uh when we were in college so we were freshmen in boulder and we had one friend with a car and it was a truck yeah and what we would do was you know, we'd drive up to say Keystone, for example, right? Or A Basin. And we would get in the, the cab was full. Five person cab, cab was full, but this was the only person with a truck at the time or a vehicle at the time. So what we would do was we get in the bed of the truck, which is legal in Colorado, but you know, we're fully kitted in our skiing or snowboard gear, sleeping bag, helmet on boots on everything in a sleeping bag and we would just be lying there and the best and you know thank thankfully we got there safely every time but that's so part was sketchy so, like, not now that i run this account it's like i would what was i thinking i would never do that again right well if somebody but, sent you that picture you'd be like oh i'm absolutely posting that that's crazy <laughs> Well, the best part is you couldn't even see us because we were just lying down right? Yeah, right. and we would share headphones. So we would listen to the <laughs> same thing, but I mean, we couldn't even talk to each other. If you're lying in the bed of a truck, oh, two yeah. or three people, I mean, yeah. it's so loud. You can't hear anything. And the best part was <laughs> on the way back when we hit traffic, you know, we pop up <laughs> and like sit up right and other, other cars were like, what? And there's people back there like what are you doing and you know it was their reaction i mean they were so friendly like yeah do you want some chips do you want some, some okay. of this like, do, you <laughs> raid? do you want that we're like sure like and we're just chatting with them but yeah i i would never do that again that's definitely my <laughs> That's that's a great answer I, I, really good. and i think you touch on something that i really like it and uh about like the traffic on I-70 is that like when you're in it, when you're stuck, like there's kind of a sense of camarad, com I can't say it, camaraderie that forms, right? Like people playing pickleball, you know, yeah. like I have on my, on the notes for the show, I have the camping chair phenomenon of people like <laughs> setting up great camping one. chairs. For the yeah, audio one. listeners, Alejandro just threw his hands up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, to both of your points, I mean, you know, there's the phenomenon of, let's say, let's call it slowing down in traffic, right? For you slow down in traffic, it, you're not moving at 55 miles an hour plus, you know, happy days, at least you're moving. Right. And then there's the stop and go traffic, which you're not getting out of your vehicle at that point, you know, still fortunately you're moving. And then there's the, okay, you know, the highway's closed. And that's where the camping chairs pop up. People are like, what do I do to entertain myself? I mean, there's guys doing push-ups on the side of the road. <laughs> there's the camping chair phenomena, like, you know, all these things. And those degrees are all different, but also kind of the same because it means like, you know, something probably isn't going well up ahead. And right. all we can do is kind of, I don't want to say suffer, but what we can do is you know suck it up and hope it you know starts to roll smoothly soon yeah right like there's nothing you nothing you can really do to control it right yeah so you might as well of course. like if it stopped like to try to figure out how to have a little fun yeah see if anybody is hungry around you you know yeah exactly yeah, yeah. yeah i think I've, i'm pretty sure i've seen pictures on the account too of, of people like grilling on the side of the road too <laughs> like people will full on just bust out their camping gear and start grilling stuff up for the people around them. Hey, if you're hungry, you know, 
everybody yeah. eats. So you know. <laughs> why not? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. let's see here. Um, so one thing, and this will segue us nicely into one of our games that we're going to play. But another thing that uh, that we talk about on the show a lot is vanity plates, and I know that you probably get sent a lot of vanity plates. Um, you know, have your has your opinion of them changed, and have you ever had one yourself? Ooh, those are great questions. So I can answer this in the part B really quickly. I have not had one myself. Um, has my opinion about them changed? You know, there's such a wide variety. And I mean, yeah, the hot poop. I mean, <laughs> the brown Tesla with a hot poop vanity plate. Yeah. I mean, that's meant to be, you know, at that point, <laughs> <Yeah>. that's, <laughs> that's just. <laughs> well, and in the pandemic, I mean, yeah, we've, so we do yeah, a lot no of notes. vanity plates on our show. We, yeah. we do a lot of vanity plate content on our show. Okay. And people send us vanity plates a lot. And, the Tesla vanity plate is it's like its own subgenre of like no <laughs> no gas blah 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 whatever you know right, right. all that sort of stuff and so this <laughs> is such I I don't want to say fresh air because that doesn't seem right <laughs> given the content but like it is sort of a breath of fresh air to just see something so like crazy and nonsensical on a Tesla instead of I'm better than you uh, right it's pretty fantastic yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that one's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that was that was largely like when when people started sending us vanity plates, we were like, okay, this is something here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And uh I, I mean, yeah. I70 brings it when it comes to vanity plates, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean I get them all the time. I need to do more compilations like this, honestly, just because the the volume is out the roof and it's one yeah. of those things where i mean it's interesting to see right mm -hmm. most people see and they're like you're you're kidding me right yeah they're like this can't be. <laughs> and i mean some of these are are perfect like especially the colorado ones that have something regarding i-70 like right you know, we can i-70 this. west yeah yeah exactly i-70 west or even you know, hate I-70 or oh, I-70. <laughs> Those are like other ones I've seen. And it's just like, you feel what I feel. That's, you yeah. know, that's spot on. I right. feel like the DMV should just give you the plate at no additional cost. If you come up with something that clever for I-70. <laughs> 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 I'll petition that. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. just like, this one's on us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well yeah. done. Yeah, yeah. So I I think my last like real like proper question that I have for you um, is is about sort of like the discourse around the the toll lane. So again, for our non Colorado listeners, there's been a push in Colorado to do like this private public partnership and develop sort of toll lanes on all the the main like artery interstates uh, that go through at least along the Front Range and through Denver and that sort of stuff. Um, and they're not without controversy. Like they're, you know, the idea of it being a public private partnership and having a private company is controversial. And there's always, you know, kind of a push and pull between more funding for roads versus funding public transportation and stuff. And, and I'm, I'm wondering, I'm curious about the sort of discourse on in, in your community that you've built and whether people are, happy with the the toll the addition of the toll lane or 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 kind of how that's been going yeah so i mean that's a great point and i don't think i can speak for everyone but it's one of those things where you know we have a lane an extra lane that is pay to play we mm -hmm. should call it right and in that sense while it's pay to play, it's also not technically a full lane, you know, in the, in the sense of size. Mm -hmm. So I think what I was reading, and don't quote me on this, please, but what I was reading was since it's technically not a full lane, they can't operate it 24 seven. So it has to be open, hmm. you know, according to certain times and also, you know, a percentage per week or per day, whatever it might be. 
And that creates this thing where it's, oh, when is traffic flowing versus when is traffic still? Let's open or have it close. And I think that's a topic actually you guys would be, you know, well versed in and you could probably look it up and kind of understand the minutia. But it's one of those things, if it can't be open 24 seven, it's unfortunately a little difficult to call it a solution in our right. sense, because, you know, let's, let's say it's uh, February, right? It's dumping snow. People are trying to get up to the mountains. It can't be open. All right. It's been snowing for three, four days now. Can't be open, you know, at least 24 seven. Now it creates that predicament for everyone on the road. It's like, oh, why is the express lane not open? And there's a reason for that, but we just don't know as a public. And yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, and that's unfortunate just because, I mean, my job is to understand and provide. Yeah. And then hopefully if you're stuck in traffic, I can tell you why you're stuck in traffic. And if possible, when you should start rolling again. And if the express lane has its own rules, it's difficult for me to do that. Mm. So I'm with everyone on this one. And, you know, I wish it was open 24 seven and that'd be happy days for all of us. But at the same time, if it's not, you know, we should figure out why that's the case and if we can change that. Yeah. yeah. Like you, like you mentioned earlier, people are only seeing like the end effect of it. They're not seeing all of the behind like all of the stuff that's adding up to it, right? It's it's difficult, like you said, to call that a solution when there's this like calculus going on behind it, right? Yeah. Right. And at that point, I mean, it's a calculus for the government. I mean, that you know, if people think I'm involved, I'm sorry, I'm not. No. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's not your fault that the I, toll lane is yeah, not open. I, yeah. Yeah. I'm not part of that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Don't was, blame but, Alejandro. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <you>. yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. yeah yeah interesting um well what do you say we play we play a couple games we're about we're like 40 minutes in let's let's play a couple games i let's i think it. i may have the perfect license plate game for you alejandro so it, uh -oh. in this game i'm going to show you on the browser here i'm going to show you three uh cars with their vanity plates blacked out and then the actual text will be on the side and you get to match Right, like draw the line style, right? Um, yeah, like, this yeah. really rewards like stereotyping people and gross generalizations. Uh, so just go with your go with your instincts. And I haven't seen this before either. So we're going to be a team. So we can we can work together and zoom in, get context clues from stickers and stuff like that. Let's do it. This All one right. is called Only in Colorado. All right, here we go. All right. Very fitting. I'll tell the fo I'll tell the folks what you're seeing while you take it in here. So we have a black Toyota Tundra up top with a, a ski rack and a, a ca what a camper topper. A top yeah, a topper. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a white Lexus RX 350, and then down at the bottom we have a uh, a Dodge Ram pick 'em up truck in black, also uh, blacked out wheels, and uh, yeah, so. We can zoom. Oh, and then the uh, plates. Yeah. Ian, do you want to read the plates? <laughs> yeah. Rocky HM. Uh, Rocky ham, I think is what it obviously. <laughs> Rocky ham. Delicious uh, Rocky ham. Yeah. Um, uh, Colorado. So CO Crave. Uh, Krav, like Krav Maga, the martial arts. Oh, CO Krav. Okay. Yep. Yep. And then the number four. Teeners, four teeners. Someone who likes the, someone who likes to hike a lot. Yep. Oh man, this is gonna be. This is a tough one. So we can, yeah, this, this. we can zoom in here. Uh, you know, there's not much in the way of context clues, but uh, yeah. What's this LCH sticker about? Do we know? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. I wish yeah. I did. Yeah. Hmm. We've got a pretty bone stock Lexus RX 350. Yeah. Oh, the F Sport. The F Sport. It's got the little F Sport badge on the side there. Yeah. 
Okay, and then we've got Not a lot of people know that just stands for for sport. <laughs> for sport. <laughs> the F is it's the full name is for sport sport. <laughs> That's the full name of that trim nice. level. Nice. Then we've got a pretty blacked out uh, Ram Laramie. Yeah. Yep. Fifteen hundred. Yep. Not trailer a lot hitch. To go off of. Yeah. Tool, what, you got toolbox? any? You got any initial initial thoughts, Alejandro? What do you think? I mean, my first thought is like, let's try to place this fourteener. Yeah. Just because, you know, that's the more I don't want to say original, but you know. What's the, what's the Rocky Ham thing? Rocky uh, yeah. H M. I think it's Rocky Home. Rocky Home. Mm, yeah. Oh, uh, that's probably one of the plate. Uh, one of the trucks, then, or is it? Is it the mom in the Lexus? That's kind of what I was thinking. It's the yeah. Lexus. I think that's the Lexus. All right, let's go with that. Let's place that there. Okay, so then we got to think: who of these other two are doing martial arts? And bragging about Probably it. Probably with the hard top. Uh I mean they're both I feel like a Dodge Ram a Dodge yeah, Ram kind the of the Ram would probably <laughs> yeah. Like, don't mess with me, right? Yeah. And the <laughs> and the, the tundra looks like maybe it's set up more for camping and stuff. Maybe. Yeah, that know. that's a very good point. Yeah. All right, let's do that. So All right. Okay. 14ers, so four, yeah, fourteeners Lexus. with the tundra, Rocky Home with the Lexus and Call a little crave, crab, whatever with the with the bro dozer down there. <laughs> All right. All right. I think you guys are gonna be happy. Here's the answers. You got it. Three out of three, man. Alejandro, so Ian, way to go. Cheers to that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah we well really, like worked through that. That was good. Uh, also, how bananas is it that somebody has a license plate that says 14 ers right? Like if you are outside of Colorado, you would not let children <laughs> anywhere near that motherfucker. Like, yeah, that is, yeah, that's very true. I mean, yeah. very Colorado saying, very Colorado thing. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, it yeah. sounds terrible. <laughs> right? Yeah, yes. definitely. <laughs> yes, yeah. I'm really into fourteeners. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Like please, please just yeah. keep that truck in Colorado. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Okay. That's hilarious. Yeah. Well done. I'm proud of you guys, man. Yeah. So we actually have another round of this. Uh, It's one that I made. So it's one that Dave has not seen yet. Um, These are also ones that I took all within all in Colorado. Um, uh, This one is called treats and things. All right. Alejandro, we got this. All right. So we got up top. You got a, a Chevy Malibu, maybe with some smoked taillights, which is the dumbest car mod of all time. <laughs> then we've got... Uh, it's f- going to be pulled over. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> or rear-ended, yeah. Uh, and then we've got a, a Ford Escape uh, under that in black with the sunroof open. Oh. And then we've got a debadged BMW X5. Yeah, your license plates. That's your license one, plates, yeah. Dave. You want to? Sure. Yeah, the license plates are bananas. Uh, <laughs> da Bong three, D A B O N G three. Um, my candy. Um, and then Sweetie S W three three T I E. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean Alejandro, right out the gate, we got to try to figure out who Sweetie is da for Bong. the BMW. You the think sweet. You think sweetie for this one? Uh, I mean, dude, look at that thing. I, mean, I know, no right? No emblems. Yep, like some weird custom Blacked BMW emblems. Yeah. Yep. yep, and just some little extra I decals mean, there. The window's also broken on the oh, passenger. Yeah. Well, it also, I just noticed, so they've also tinted their taillights, but done such a poor job that it's actually peeling oh it is peeling yeah, yeah you're right. okay boy i i'm getting a strong debong uh off of the yeah, chevy malibu the top one. yeah yeah I, I agree with that one yeah you think so okay all right um yeah and i think sweetie is just bananas enough to work for the <laughs> x5 yeah 
I agree. Yeah. Okay. Then that's going to put my candy on the Ford Escape. Ian, are these in order? All right. That's, okay. That's that's your that's your guess. Anyone want to change their answer? Good. All right. Well, guys, we had a good run. Uh, you got them all wrong. Oh, no way. So my candy's on the Malibu. Yeah. We got uh, Sweetie on the Escape, and we got Debong. I was thinking that could be the other Debong one, yeah. right? I mean, That's fair. I mean, the Debong one is so cartoonish, right? Of like clapped out bmw x5 with peeling <laughs> tail light tint and those decals this is made all the better by the fact that i took this in the goodwill parking lot um <laughs> it was you took all of these yes yourself? yep no way yeah, yeah. Okay. and i i took all There's the ones respect. on the previous one <laughs> okay i love that <laughs> yeah we, Jeez, we're like colorado's offering <laughs> right <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> yeah our wives are used to us just going like ah, ah take a picture yeah like yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> right yeah yeah no i told this story before on the show but like i was on a work trip one time and i saw a, a, a sob that was a really rare sound. It was a 9.4X, which they made like four of before they went out of business. But I was on a work trip and I was in the middle of a conversation with a coworker in the in my in the passenger seat. And I like threw my phone on. I was like, take a picture of that. And it just looks like a like a crossover. You know, like it's just like yeah. a, a gray crossover. And he's like, what do you, why? It doesn't <laughs> matter, just do it. <laughs> Dude, I mean, I saw what was it, the past episode? Where you had the Alpina, and I was like, oh. "Yeah, yeah." I mean, talking about like a well, well, not well-known car, but just you know, for the inner group, it's a goal car. Absolutely, I'd love to have one. I mean, it's very low-key. You'd never know. Not flashy. Great body. Yep. And I mean, that thing roars, right? Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. a B seven Alpina. Like so, <laughs> it's yeah, it's one of those things. Where I was like, "Damn, like when's my day to have one of those?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, like the Colorado car scene. Like what I seventy provides in variety. Like the Colorado car scene. I feel like we have such like diverse stuff on the road out here. Like if you go on like Colorado Craigslist and look for stuff you're not going to find the same stuff in like Kansas city or like Albuquerque, like any of the like nearby biggish cities. Like it's, yeah, it, it's I love diverse. That. Yeah. Right. You're, you're true. You're so right. I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, you might have that Ferrari that's been sitting in the garage and like Evergreen or Vale or Beaver Creek yeah. and it's well taken care of. But of course you have, you know, the homie who has a Tacoma, or RAV4 that's been ripping to and from the mountains, you know, for years. And then you have this whole segment of, let's call it like camper vans almost. Oh yeah. Like and I mean, the overlanding some of those, stuff, right? Yeah. yeah the overland, I mean, you know, obviously you have like the sprinters, the Mercedes mm -hmm. sprinters that are like up here, but you also have other, you know, people who converted a schoolie, like a bus and <laughs> it's just as cool. You're like, oh, you have a bathroom and a shower. I mean, <laughs> all right, I could live there too, you know? Yeah, like a tile <laughs> so, floor or like a hardwood floor in your car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome to see. Yeah. Well, yeah, the whole concept of like a winter beater is like, yeah, is like a, like the mid, in the upper Midwest where I grew up, there's definitely that idea too, where pe there will be people who have the car that they drive in winter, but it's a beater because they salt the roads really heavily. And so they're going to just, the car is just going to dissolve into nothing in 10 years. Right. So they have cars that they do that with, but here it's like, it's a much more like the winter beater game here is, is another level from that of it's like, luxurious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, and it, or, or rugged, like super, super rugged right. and utilitarian, right. you know, yeah. not, no, not a that. disposable thing that you're throwing out. That's what a winter beater means in the rest of the country.
Yeah. Of course. And like, where, where are you guys actually from originally? Missouri, from Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah. Okay. yeah and Chicago I-70. and elsewhere in the Midwest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Dave, you know, I 70, but yeah, I'm, I'm from Boston originally. So I mean, oh. for me, it was okay. We're taking the cars to, you know, the shop and we're going to have summer tires replaced with winter tires. And, you know, it was just a thing, right? Mm-hmm. Because we grew up driving on winter tires in the winter and then summer tire. It was like a very specific thing. And you always wanted to beat the first snowfall. It was, it was almost, you know, a play. It was magic, but you're like, I think it's going to snow in the next couple of weeks. Like I need my appointment and it would happen. Sure. Right. And you're like, Oh, thank God. <laughs> and then here, it's one of those things where people are like, let's risk it. Like, <laughs> You know, it's, and I mean, it's one of those things I can't even believe because fortunately, actually, one of my partners now is a uh, Nokian tires, right? Oh, yeah. And I mean, fun fact, they were the first company, they, they invented the snow tire. So they were the first company to come out with snow tires. Oh. And that's really cool because I mean, they're all season tires which most people are like, oh yeah, all seasons, those don't work in the winter. You know, well, I guess if you know, they're like, oh yeah, those don't work in the winter. They freeze up, they harden up, you know, you skid, all that stuff. The joke is they're the three season tires. Yeah, exactly. They're the three season tires, right? There's no such thing as four. Yeah. And for them, fortunately, they understood the assignment, did their homework and were able to create something where the tread provides for four seasons, which is one of the biggest things you know and then on top of that if it doesn't harden up you know you still have traction and if i say i don't know 15 years ago now when i was a young kid and i was driving my parents if i knew about that i'd say hey let's you know get some nokian tires because now i don't have to lift these tires and put them in the car and they weigh half my <laughs> half my weight and you know, I'm throwing out my back as a you know 12 year old trying to throw these in the car <laughs> so yeah. yeah well yeah well we're yeah. glad we're glad you came to colorado and we're glad that you were inspired to start i70 things you know like we're glad that the inspiration struck because you have you definitely have carved out a really awesome corner of the internet for for like-minded folks, for people that are just curious, for people that need to learn like that the mountains can snap and bite you in a moment's notice. Mm-hmm. You know, it it's uh we're really thankful because it's great. It it provides us a lot of a lot of entertainment and information. We're very, very thankful for it. No, I appreciate that. And that goes both ways. I mean, you guys are doing amazing things as well and I hope not only your passion for cars and vehicles, you know, gets across to people, but also, Hey, you know, we're all in this together. That's the biggest thing. That's, that's the message from me. And then now it's, if that's the fact, like how can we make it safer, more enjoyable and quicker, more efficient, you know, so you can get from point A to point B and you can actually have dinner with your friends when you come back to Denver or, get up to the mountains quicker so you can you know put your skis on or your board on and you know get first tracks or whatever it is right right (laughs) yeah yeah so on your instagram profile you have a link well for i mean if anybody's not following you on instagram they need to right uh you have a you have your link uh, that takes you to the Traction Law blog, the Colorado Department of Transportation flow sheet that you have there. Uh, you've got a shop and you've got the CDOT travel alerts. You've got some great merch. I like this. Make I-70 move again. Yeah. <laughs> Camp in the mountains, not the left lane. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yes, let's give a round of applause. Yeah. For that <laughs> yes, one. there you go. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, where else, uh, anything else that you would like to plug um, or, or any other place that folks can find you? Yeah. So, I'd love to plug uh, the beer sponsor. So, oh. Outlaw Beer. They're doing great things. They're a mile high light beer. They're based out of Denver. It's actually Tivoli Brewing. If you didn't know, they're 
the oldest brewery in Colorado. Yep. And, you know, they're just providing people with a great light beer. If that's your thing, you know, check them out. You won't be disappointed. And then on top of that, Nokian Tires, we're doing awesome Absolutely. things with them. Check out or try to find the billboards that are popping up along I-70 uh, for the next few months out here. And hey, if you're ever stuck on I-70, um, feel free to show us what's happening and hashtag keep I-70 moving so we see what you're seeing and hopefully we can fix that. Nice. I love that. Hashtag I se- keep I-70 moving. Yeah. That's Dave, great. What, what should people do if they enjoyed this generally? You know what? Uh, besides giving Alejandro a follow, text us vanity plates if you see them at 720-515-1391. Um, send all the crazy I-70 stuff to Alejandro. Um, yeah. 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 Alejandro, thank you again. This was awesome. Uh, I'm so excited we were able to make this work. Um, Dave, everybody else, we love you. Thank you. Goodbye.